time for episode four, Coping with Pain. All right, so why does pain happen? Well, it can happen because the cancer itself can cause pain. Other times there's inflammation of the tissues or bone and joint stiffness due to other treatments that you may be going through. Sometimes nerves get impinged or there's neuropathy. Uh, Sometimes that's also caused by the treatments. Deconditioning, that's just when we don't move our bodies. And when we don't move our bodies, our muscles get weak. And when our muscles get weak, we oftentimes experience muscle soreness, other joint pain, that kind of thing. And then of course, other treatments can cause pain too. And one of the truths about uh, cancer treatment is just because you're having cancer treatment doesn't mean that any other pain that you may have had in the past isn't going to just miraculously go away. In fact, sometimes your awareness of your pain, even if you've had it for a long time, can just become more so. So there are lots of different reasons for pain, and it's important for us to work with you on the specific source of your pain so we can help treat it. So there are four main things you want to tell basically every medical provider you come in contact with. And that when they ask you about your pain, you want to tell them where it is and be as specific as possible, like actually point to the spot and don't leave any spots out. The more we know, the more we can help. Then obviously they're going to ask you to rate how bad your pain is. And that's typical uh, scale is from 1 to 10, with 1 being I have no pain, or the pain's not getting in my way at all, to 10, it's the worst pain you've ever felt imaginable. That scale is obviously subjective, and it's really only relative to you. It's not relative to how much pain there is in the world, or how much pain your friend had, or whatever. It's really just given your own sense of it, how bad is your pain right now? The other thing that you should certainly ask, or tell them rather, is be as descriptive as you can about what the pain feels like. Whether it's a stabbing pain, or an electric kind of shocky pain, or a throbby pain, or a dull achy pain. Each of these pains are important, these styles are these descriptors, because Different kinds of pain, different sources of pain have different kinds of feelings. So neuropathic pain, which is pain because your nerves are damaged or impinged, that's going to feel more electric. Uh, Sore muscles is going to be that uh, sort of throbby, achy pain. Stabbing pain, there may be a bone spur or other thing like that. And because of the different sources of pain, there are different treatments for the pain. And if you take a medication that's supposed to treat the neuropathy, which is the electric kind of pain, it won't do necessarily a lot for the throbbing kind of pain or the stabbing kind of pain. And people oftentimes get into a a loop where they feel like um, I'm taking pain medicine and it's still not helping. And then I gotta take more pain medicine and that's not helping either. And that either means I'm on my way to becoming an addict, or there must be something wrong with me that the the normal medications don't work. What's often the case is that you're being treated for one kind of pain, but there's another kind of pain as well, and it's true that you can have more than one kind. So the more you can describe it and be as explicit as you can, that's a great way to help the doctors help you. And then the fourth and final thing is really how much is this pain getting in the way of your daily functioning? What is it stopping you from doing? There are lots of times when people say, I have a lot of pain, but I still get up and go and do my daily routine and my activities and all that kind of stuff. So what we're really trying to do is make sure we're treating the pain that's getting in your way. There's no way to be completely pain-free and conscious at the same time. So there, there will always be some aches or pains that we can't make go away completely, but the more we know about these four things, where the pain is, how bad the pain is, what it feels like, and what it's stopping you from doing, those are the things that are going to help you, help us help you. So you probably heard a lot about this first category of medications called opioids or narcotics, and they're both short-acting and long-acting. The short-acting medications tend to take effect pretty quickly. 
but they also tend to go away and wear off pretty quickly. The long-acting opioids um, take longer to take effect, but they tend to stay in your system longer. The other non-narcotic or other non-opioid kind of medications are medications that can be also used for other purposes. So anticonvulsant medications, which are usually given for people who have convulsions or epilepsy or that kind of thing, or seizures, they oftentimes have a, a side benefit of uh, reducing your pain level. Antidepressants, there are certain types that also reduce um, pain, even though their primary purpose is to re reduce depression. There are topical agents, which are creams or patches that just go on the skin and the medication kind of oozes into your body slowly. Corticosteroids, acetaminophen like Tylenol or NSAIDs like Motrin, uh, those all work in different ways for different kinds of pain. It's, everybody may take a different kind of version of each one of these or different ones. And even if you don't have seizures or you're not particularly deeply depressed, some of the medications may help in managing your pain. Talking to your pain, we have a pain specialist, several pain specialists here at the clinic who can help you think through, in addition to your oncologist, uh, what the right uh, balance or recipe of medications is for you. So there are good sides and downsides to medications. The upsides, the pros to taking medications, is that it can quickly relieve the symptoms in some cases, depending on what kind of pain there is. It also, in some cases, can help with other issues, like if you're having a hard time sleeping or you're having a lot of anxiety, sometimes the medications can help reduce those difficulties in addition to taking care of the pain. And if your pain comes and goes, you can vary the quality or the degree of pain medications that you're taking. So it's kind of customizable to you. The downsides are that medications can have side effects like constipation uh, or being overly sedated. And that's something, sometimes that has to do with the dosing and how much you take. And sometimes it's just with the kind of medication that you're taking. The other thing about medications is if you take a pain pill and it doesn't work right away, you, you, you can't just go take another pain pill because sometimes that'll lead to overdosing or, or making you sick in some other way, upsetting your stomach. So they don't necessarily fix everything and you can't just keep taking them uh, if you're uh, not feeling the effects right away. And obviously with the opioids, you've heard a lot about this, I'm sure, around addiction risk and that really needs to be talked about. It's especially true if you've ever had any trouble before with alcohol or drugs or other substances um, and you're primed for that kind of thing. Most people aren't, but some people are. And so it's really important to talk to us about that in an open and honest way because the more we know ahead of time, the more we can help. The good news is there's other things you can do besides taking medications. Heat or ice on the area that's hurting can oftentimes reduce the swelling or in, with heat, you, you improve blood flow and with ice, you reduce the swelling. And depending on what the cause of the pain is, that can be really helpful. Stretching is especially good for the sore muscle kind of pain. And we have a staff member here who's uh, skilled with yoga and um, our strength and motion class, which we talked about in an earlier episode, can also talk about ways to keep your muscles strong with stretching and strengthening. And that can also go a long way toward helping reduce uh, your pain. Luckily, we also have a masseuse here at the clinic who can also help work out some of those knots that get in your shoulders and your back, and that can be useful. Also, there's a lot of massage and um, other techniques of uh, people in the community too, and we can help you find providers that are near you if that works better. Relaxation techniques and coping skills, we'll talk about those in future episodes, but those can also go a long way at helping reducing your experience of your pain. So who are the pain management specialists here at the clinic? Well, we have a physiatrist who is a medical provider that treats conditions that affect how you move. Basically, 
she talks about addressing nerve, muscle, and bone disorders that get in the way of how you function. She also is really good at helping strategize ways for you to be able to move and live life more comfortably with exercises and also other types of treatments that she can do. We have a palliative care provider who is a medical um, doctor who specializes in quality of life and overall symptom management. Um, and she's, in, she's important to talk to throughout the treatment process. Some people think of palliative care as only something you talk to in the worst case scenario and toward the end. But it turns out actually that the sooner you get involved with getting their consultation, the better your quality of life and treatment will be. And then lastly, we have a, a, a provider, a medical provider who is, specializes in really sort of thinking holistically about pain management, thinking about medications, as well as all the other aspects we've just talked about, um, and integrating in that into your overall medical treatment process. So there are three people who are medical providers who all can be really useful in helping you manage your pain. There are non-medical providers as well. Strength in Motion, which is an exercise and strengthening class, which I may have mentioned before, and that meets on Mondays every week. And there are introductory sessions here at the Cancer Center uh, where she can talk to you about what's safe and viable for you to keep your body strong. As I noted, there's a massage therapist here who will help you relax, restore, and re-energize your body to restore it to its natural balance and that can happen before, during, or after your treatments are done. She's here on Tuesdays from 12 to 3.30 and Thursdays 11 to 2.30. And she's been doing this for a long time. Just as a note, the first 30 minutes are free. And finally, we also have a relaxation and meditation group um, that can work with stress management techniques. And she's here on Tuesdays at 10 and at 2. And she's also a trained yoga instructor. So... Lots of good information there. And finally, there's me, behavioral medicine. And I'm a health psychologist training in mind, body, and coping skills. Oftentimes, my work with patients works on exploring the mental and emotional magnifiers of pain, developing a model to cope with that, the pain that's left above and beyond what the medications can take care of, and also working with your family and friends to develop supports that will reduce the impact of the pain on your life. The overall message here is, if you're in pain, you don't have to suffer alone. There's lots we can do. Just ask.